With us now is Alan Higgins, CIO at Coots. And Alan, uh, first of all, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, I want to ask you morning, what Matt. you think that thing is. You know, we have a story on the terminal saying um, Bank America data shows that at least from, from their clients' perspective, they're seeing retail clients, so you know, mom and pop investors coming and buy the dips over the last three weeks in a row as individual, as institutional investors, I should say, um, continue to hold out of this market. What do you think about that? Um, it seems like a concerning data point to me. Yeah, that's interesting because it's pretty hard to buy the dip for a lot of investors, even institutional investors, but actually, well, if you step back a bit, what have we got here? We've got a, a correction associated with a volatility increase and um, our friends at JP Morgan did some really good work. Is when, when you have these volatility increases, what should you do? If you knew nothing, what should you do? And uh, the retail in the US have it right because basically, if there's no US recession, if you can put that to one side, then since 1990, we've had 15 of these volatility spikes and equity market weakness. Basically, uh, six months later, the market's up 90% of the time, just one, one, one of those occasions it was down marginally, and the average return is circa 7.5%. So it's, it's a kind of a familiar buy the dip story. The, the issue is what happens if we're going into recession, then definitively should sell. Our view is that uh, there's very few signs of a US recession. Monetary pol policy still loose in our view, and, and, uh, and therefore we'd be more in stay invested, stay with risk assets, and, and at the margin, buy on the dip. Okay, uh, so follow the, follow the mar and pop investors, in, in perhaps in, in, in uh, Matt's case. Good morning to you, Alan. Good morning, Anna. Let's talk about the global equity uh, route that we've seen a little more there, as Matt's uh, rightly taken us down that line. I've got this chart, this is, you know, what a world. Worldwide stocks are set for their worst month in some three years, as illustrated on this very nice graphic. Um, so does your ability to decide, you know, this is just a correct let's buy the dips here does that depend on where we see treasuries head because many people are drawing the link between treasuries robustly above 3% at 3.2 for example for a period and the sell-off that we saw in equities I think Anna you're right I think that is the underlying forget I mean trade is important we saw that with Caterpillar, Caterpillar's results yesterday's but it's all about treasuries treasuries at sort of circa three to three and a quarter add a credit spread on so you're at four to four and a half percent that is serious competition for risk assets and and a good reason why we're correcting however it is just a correction and at the end of the day equities is a, is a better investment especially Especially at this stage of the cycle. Do you sell volatility here, Alan? I mean, if you take a look at the VIX, I think we're around 20 right now on, on, on the VIX index. Um, is, that, uh, is that a relatively high level historically, and do you expect it to come down over time? Uh, Matt, good question. Obviously, um, after the events earlier this year, you have to be quite bold to sell volatility when we had uh, uh, some of the ETFs blow up earlier this year. But th the answer to the question is similar to what I said earlier. Absent a US recession, yes. Uh, selling volatility, buying risk is the way to go. However, if we look, for example, at 08, 09, where this strategy didn't work, vol spiked initially to 2025 and then carried on, of course, above 50, so it would have ended in disaster. So you've got to do your work and you've got to do your, your probability weighted of a US recession in particular, because the big declines of markets are typically associated with the US recession. <laughs> So on balance, yes, sell volatility, but it's probably not for your mom and pop. I think the, the, the easier strategy is to is, is probably hold your nerve in risk assets and, and, and look to add a little bit. Does it worry you what we've seen being sold in this route over in the United States, Alan? Because this, this chart talks about the victims of rates in the US, the victims of higher rates, and some of them are key to the economy. So we've got in here uh, the S&P Composite in white, and underperforming that, the home builders, the automobiles, and the financials, and in particular the home builders and the automobiles. When we look at the extent of the selling there, does that just tell us about higher rates? Does it tell us about worries about the US economy? It doesn't sound like you are worried about the US economy. No, I mean, I mean, the US economy is much broader than these industrial names, clearly, with consumption dominant. dominant. And yes, these are, these, you've got some poster childs of some sectors, in particular automobiles, that are, that are in trouble, not just in the US, but globally. Look at the share price performance of Volkswagen, for yeah. example. Um, so it, it's, 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 it's not, it doesn't tell you about the US economy. It tells you that, well, value is underperforming as, as a style, and it tells you that certain sectors and companies are challenged.